Hello, I'm Jacopo Bertolotti, and this is the second episode of Scientific Animations with Mathematica. And today we are going to step up difficulty quite a lot, a lot of new concepts and uh, uh, ways of doing things. And the final result will be this little planetarium that you can see there. Uh, word of advice, uh, rendering this is a bit on the edge of the capabilities of my poor old laptop. So things might slow down uh, from time to time. Uh, if you have a more modern and or capable computer, probably things will go better with you. The first thing that we need to do is to create a bunch of spheres that will act as our stars slash planets. So uh, as last time, the graphics environment allow us to generate 2D primitives. The graphics 3D environment is going to allow us to generate 3D primitives. So, as usual, we need lists of things inside uh, curly brackets. And now we want to generate a number of planets. Now, we don't really want to name them one by one. So what we're going to do is to create a table of what? Of spheres uh, with positions. So we want them to move in circular orbits. So uh, the, we are going to need to set coordinates and the radius. Let's fix the radius of all of them to 0 0.1. Uh, they are all on circular orbit, so they are going to have a radius r, then cosine of omega t, sine of omega t, zero. Meaning that they move in a circle with angular frequency omega uh, in the xy plane, and they never move uh, along z. Now, this still doesn't know what either r, omega, or tr. So we need to specify before uh, we run it. Let's start from radius. Uh, we would like the radius to uh, run from some value to another. Now, what we could do is to give a minimum, a maximum, and a step like we did last time. We are going to use a slightly different approach this time. And we are going to say that, OK, we are going to have a radius at 0 0.1, 1 at value 1. 1 at value 2, 1 at value 3, uh, and 1 at value 4. OK, now we need to specify time. We are not going to have anything move just yet. So let's fix time at 0. It doesn't really matter right now. We are going to move things later. Uh, we still need omega, uh, the angular frequency. Now, if we want to be in any way realistic, uh, we need omega to be one, a function of the radius, and two, the correct function of the radius. Now, let's start typing and let's adjust the syntax in a second. Following Kepler's law for planets, we would really like omega to be proportional to the square root of one over the radius cubed. Semicolon to say that it doesn't have to plot anything. Now, we could go like this, but for later use, it's better to transform this into a function. A function means that we give a variable, and remember, all variables go inside square brackets, uh, that we are going to call r. This is going to be our variable, and we specify that it's a variable by putting an underscore after it. Instead of equal, we say colon equal, which in mathematical jargon means don't evaluate what is following now. Wait until I call the function, which is useful. So now omega is a function of r, and we need to remember it. And we need to specify that omega is going to be a function of r. Now, nothing is moving, so we are not going to see the effect there. Uh, but still, it's something. Uh, let's see what's happening now. OK, what we have are five spheres. Great. Uh, all in a, uh, in a row, fine, because we are time equal to zero. Uh, there are a couple of things that we don't like. Uh, the first one is very easy to fix, and it is this annoying box around everything. So, boxed, false. This is going to generate the same thing without the box around. 
Another thing that we don't like is that they are all the same color and we also don't like the color in particular. So uh, let's change the color. So instead of having a, a table where we define a sphere, we define another sphere, we define another sphere, let's prefix everything. So before the definition of every sphere, we define what color is going to be the next sphere. And I'm going to explain this in a second. Now hue is a function that essentially cover all colors when the argument goes between zero and one. In our case, the radius is somewhere between zero and four. So if we divide everything by five, we renormalize everything properly and we get things between zero and one. So now we get different colors. You could specify every color independently. Uh, that's fine. We're not going to do it because uh, I wanted to show you this one. There is another small thing that it doesn't really show now, but is going to be important later. Under the hood, what it's doing now is that it's starting creating the, uh, the 3D object and then running through this table that generates the code that I will actually like this graphics 3D function to read. This upside down. I will first like to generate the code and then graphics 3D to read it. And I can do it by tell it to evaluate this beforehand. This small hat, uh, add function here is mathematical jargon to say, apply whatever function is on the left on whatever is on the right. So it's changing nothing now visibly because drawing this is fast enough. Uh, but under the hood, this is a lot more efficient and is going to be important later uh, because, as I said, my computer now is not super fast, so things are going to slow down horribly. So we want uh, to make things nice. Uh, another thing that we would like is to specify uh, the plotting range. Now, uh, if you don't say anything, Mathematica will just fix uh, the boundaries just to fit whatever objects you have in there, but we would like the range to be fixed all over our animation. So we need to fix a plot range and we need to fix a plot range along X, a plot range along Y and a plot range along Z. Now let's go for a plot range that is going to fit nicely our orbits. Along Z nothing is happening, so we can have a smaller range. Okay, now uh, they are much smaller. Remember, they are going to start moving. So uh, we are going to need the space. Another thing we might want is to change the background. Okay, this is a starting point. Uh, next step, let's move them. And as we did last time, Let's create the frames one by one as a table. And here, what we want is time uh, to go, let's say, from 0 to 10 in step of 0 0.2, just to start looking at it. And then we would like to animate these frames. OK, this already start nice starting point. So we don't need much more than this to start. Let's stop the animation. Uh, let's think what else do we want? Well, first thing we would like is to plot the trajectory of these objects. We would like all of these to have a trajectory that tell me not only where the spheres are now, but what they were in the past. So we don't just want to show these. We also want on top of it, uh, to show an, a different plot that showed me the trajectory. So how to combine the two things? There is a comment called show that will do exactly that. Let me give a bit of space here uh, for this. And it's going to take different plots separated by a comma and put them on top of each other. So next thing that I want is to plot the uh, trajectories. So uh, the way that I'm going to do it is to use a Parametric plot 3D. So what parametric plot 3D wants is 
the parametric equations, which are nice because that's what I uh, already have now. I want one curve per sphere, so I need to generate a table. Uh, a table of what? Well, a table of the equations, which is going to be the same as here, running over the same radii. And then we want to say, okay, where this should start and where this should stop. And now we hit a problem with the naming of variables. Uh, time here is already in use. So I will like this, let's call it T1. So we are going to have T1 running from zero to T. Problem, uh, this star from zero, this star from zero, parametric plots doesn't like when a plot go from zero to zero. So we need this one to start from some very small number that is not zero. Okay, another thing that we can do and is going to be useful later is that we don't need the, to retype this every time. We can copy paste this, call this uh, a list of radii, so our list, and say that our list is equal to this thing. And we can also use it here. Uh, it's going to be useful later because we are going to have to use that uh, list of radii over and over and over. So uh, let's simplify notation and let's run this. Okay, you can immediately see a lot of problems running around. One of them is that all, all our uh, nice uh, plot range, box falls, background are not there anymore, uh, which is a problem. What's happening? Uh, this show is taking the optional parameters from the first one, not from the second one. So what we need is to take all of this and to put them in the parametric plot. Let's try again. Okay, better but not perfect. There is still the uh, labeled axis there that shouldn't be uh, there at all. Uh, and our orbits uh, are the wrong color. They are all this annoying bluish. So let's stop this and let's first remove the labeled axis. So axis false. Uh, and then more complicated is to generate the colors that we want. The function that define how I'm going to plot each of these curves is called plot style. And it's supposed to be a list. So what we need is again a table that is going to tell us uh, what is going to be the color. So let's have the same colors as the sphere. So hue of r over five, r over all the r list. And this should run, but should be relatively slow. And also, it's only taking the right color for the last one. What's happening? Well, it's generating this table at the wrong time. So we want to evaluate this at the beginning. And we also want to evaluate this at the beginning. So that it first generate the codes that parametric plot 3D must read. Okay, much better. Now each planets have its own nice trajectory going with it. Uh, there is still something that we can make a bit better. The central one, for instance, is making a, an orbit that is small but is not fixed. We cannot put zero there because if we were to put zero uh, in there, uh, we'll get a one over zero in our definition of omega, of the angular frequency. We don't want that. So let's put here a very small number. It doesn't really matter. Uh, alternatively, we could define the angular frequency uh, to get an exception when r is equal to zero, but it's not really worth it. So let's run this one. Okay, now the red one seems to stay where it should. Great. Let's copy this and play with it for a second. Let's create a copy of this. Uh, and let's say that now we are keeping the 
red one fixed in the center. What happens if we look at everything from the perspective of another one? So essentially what we want to do is to take the coordinates and subtract the coordinate of one of them so that we are now uh, fixing on one of them. Which one? Well, let's say the one with radius 2. So we fix and we subtract everywhere uh, the coordinates. We also need to subtract them here. We need to subtract the coordinate of the planet with radius 2. And if we round this one, okay, the green one, which was the one with coordinate radius 2, is staying fixed in the center. And the rest is moving all around in a much more complicated fashion. Now, if we want to see uh, how it goes further than this, we need to increase how much time we want to wait. This is going to take a second to do. And again, my computer is struggling a bit to run this and record the video at the same time. Uh, but you can see this is, if you want, the difference between uh, describing the whole thing in a heliocentric uh, frame or describing it in a uh, geocentric frame. One last thing that we can do is to put them together. So now we have a representation of the heliocentric and a representation of the geocentric. We can just put them one next to the other. What we are going to do, let's copy this one and let's also take whatever was inside here. And now, instead of having only one, let's create an environment that is called graphics row which accept a list of, uh, of graphics. And we'll plot them side by side. And here it is, our little planetarium with both the heliocentric and geocentric representation. Of course, it's far from, from perfect. Uh, the spheres are probably a bit small. Uh, the colors could be better. The sh choice of uh, plot range could be better, etc., etc., etc. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a starting point. So uh, feel free to play with parameters and hope you have fun with it.